Hello everybody, it's me again. It's Russell Mills. It is August 19th on a Saturday. I want to say hello to everybody. Um, I'm going to play you guys a clip today. Um, I live in the state of Massachusetts and I guess there was a protest out in Boston today. Um, you know, protesting about the you know, the racial violence that's going on between black people. Um, so, let's see if I can play this for you guys. Comment. Christina, you were there when some tense moments uh, arise. What's happening at, at this point? Well, there are a lot of people here, and there have been people here for a few hours. Uh, some people waiting to go into the bandstand here, and you can see this rally has uh, is going on now. So people are in there, the speakers are in there. Uh, and then there are, of course, a lot of counter-protesters out here. There were some people who were trying to get in there who actually wanted to attend the rally, to listen to the speeches, who were expressing some frustration that they weren't able to get in because there's a lot of security. You can see two rings of barriers around here and police surrounding the bandstand on the common here. But yes, as you mentioned, there were some tense moments. There are a lot of people here, and as you can imagine, it's almost, uh, you could say it's inevitable, um, because different people with different opinions uh, crowded together. What we saw just a little while ago was one man, um, apparently a Trump supporter, uh, I'm not, I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I did see it coming to uh, fisticuffs. I saw punches being thrown. Uh, and we got some footage of that. It was a little tense for us being um, not intending to be, but just being close in proximity while that was happening. I talked to with some people um, as, as people were just arriving on both sides. You, you have um, people who call themselves anti-fascists and they tend to be wearing black. Um, there might be some around me here, but there, there are a lot of people with black masks. I asked one man, why was he wearing a black mask? He said, in, in, there's some over here. He said, in, in some, uh, on one hand, it's for his own protection. Um, on the other hand, he wanted to remain anonymous. He didn't want people who uh, know him, his family, uh, to hold it against him that he's out here, especially if things get particularly tense. I also spoke with people when they were waiting for uh, attendees of the rally at the entrance here. Uh, there, one man who described himself as uh, working with the organizers, providing security, he was wearing goggles, and we've seen a few people with goggles here. I asked him why was he wearing the goggles, and he said, of course, uh, in light of what he saw happening last weekend, he wanted to protect his eyes. He was concerned about pepper spray, tear gas, uh, and, and he said, expressed fear about the, what he called Antifa people out here and extremists. Uh, and he was very concerned about the security of the people coming here. We have seen, uh, we saw one person with a flag uh, flagpole, um, and the police kind of surrounded him and took the flagpole from him because there were some very, um, very strict rules about no sticks, uh, no weapons, nothing that can even be used as a weapon here on the common. So right now it seems like at least where we are standing, and this is a big area, keep in mind, this whole area surrounding the bandstand, so we can't be everywhere at once. But where we're standing right now, things to, seem to have calmed down. I can hear some screaming on the other side, and every time uh, someone tries to walk through what through the barricades, there's sort of an alleyway created by police, uh, and into the bandstand, protesters kind of surround that alleyway and and throw chants out. Um, you know, racists go home, uh, things like that. So that's what we're seeing here and hoping this remains calm. Everybody's saying they hope it remains calm. I haven't run into anybody saying, you know, that they're here uh, amped up and, and ready to cause something. Uh, and I also haven't, for that, I haven't seen any kind of Nazi or uh, anti-Semitic or uh, any white separatist signs or flags or anything of that sort, really just um, Trump, you know, people who are clearly here to support Trump with the Make America Great Again hats or Trump T-shirts and, uh, and people here with Black Lives Matter and people here with, uh, who they describe themselves as anti-fascist. And really, it's not really two sides here. It's many, many different causes and many, many different sides here on the common. That's the latest from here. I'm going to send it back to you. Christina, how would you describe the turnout for the free speech rally itself? Because looking at the aerial images, really, it just seems like there are people on the bandstand itself, but then really no one surrounding it. Right, and that's what I'm seeing here. I mean, 
That was intentional. There are barricades around the bandstand, so they didn't want anyone to be able to surround it at all. And uh, there are some people who had told us earlier on that they were a little frustrated they couldn't get in. They wanted to go in there, uh, not to protest it, but to listen to the speeches and take part in the rally. Um, and because of the heavy security, they weren't able to get in. I don't know if more people have been able to get in since uh, we heard from those people. But yeah, not a huge turnout. Certainly many, many, many more people outside the barricades than inside. All right, Christina, thank you.